Um, welcome into New Vision Family Fellowship. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're out there. I want to today endeavor to do something that I not I don't normally do um, in in sermons or in preaching, but I want us to take a hard look at what is going on in the world right now, especially as it relates to the nation of Israel, and look at it through biblical eyes a little bit. We, we've been talking about that, how we, uh, how we need to see um, things spiritually. And there was a great word given at the end of Sunday school, and I don't want to butcher it, so I'm, I, and I, but I wrote it down. Okay, one thing, and and uh, uh, Miss Jill heard this, and now I heard it, and it's awesome, and I don't want us to forget it. Okay, we look all over our world; seems like everything's blowing up, everything's going crazy, everything's 180 out from where it ought to be, but things are not falling apart; they are falling into place. Amen? Things are not falling apart. They are falling into place. Now, my dad, a great godly man, preacher of the Word, been to Israel, saw everything there, and he, he was very, very, very focused. Very focused on end times eschatology what we've been talking about in revelations on wednesday nights excuse me and and i used to look at it and i kind of looked at it kind of flippantly but folk it's in our faces right now <laughs> if i can just put it in in a in a red in redneck terms what's going on in the world right now is literally right here in front of our faces and we need to, um, as they say, have our heads on a swivel. We need to see what's going on. We need to pay attention, but we don't need to be afraid of it. You hear me? We don't need to be afraid of it. The, um, Jesus said, if you'll turn over, our main text today is going to be in the book of Matthew, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Even back over 2,000 years ago, the disciples were just as concerned with the end times as we are today. Really, if you ask me, we need to be a whole lot more concerned about the end times events than they were. But they came to Jesus, if you'll look um, in verse 3 of Matthew 24, I'll give you every word a chance to get there. Matthew 24 and verse 3. It says this, As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, and by the way, I'll stop right there for just a moment. This is the beginning of what they call the Olivet Discourse. In other words, when Jesus <coughs> laid out a lot of stuff, says, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? They asked him two questions, okay? They said, tell us, when will these things happen? Jesus did not answer that question. Okay? A lot of people want to say that He did, but He did not answer that question. They said, when's it going to go down, Jesus? When's it going to happen? Right? We want to know. And, and not for any kind of malicious reasons. They wanted to know to be, so that they might be prepared for it. Right? We spoke in Sunday school, and if this fly does not leave me alone, I'm going to put a curse on it or something. Amen? But 
they wanted to know exactly what, when it was going to happen, right? So that they might be prepared. We spoke of in Sunday school today, and I'm going to tell you, Sunday school here lately has lined up with the sermon, and we are not calling one another. It's just lining up. So that tells me something, right? That, that God's in it, amen? amen? But we spoke in Sunday school about how if we knew right? If we knew exactly when it was going to happen, we would probably live like the devil up to about 24 hours before that and then fall on our faces and repent. Amen? Amen? I mean, come on. Human nature, right? The cat's away. The mice will play. Right? He says here, for many will... uh, Excuse me. I keep yawning. I apologize. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples, this is verse 3 again, came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Now, one of the two questions he did answer was, What are the signs? What, what, what are we going to see before you come back, Jesus? And he, and he says right here, first he gives them a warning, right? He said, And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. Okay? See to it that no one misleads you. And there is no greater example that we have of people attempting to mislead us, Christians, as just happened less than a month ago. Right? Any of you ever heard of Benny Hinn? You ever heard of Benny Hinn? The the slap you on the forehead guy and breathe on you guy and you fall out and flop around like a fish on the floor and you're supposedly healed and all this. Okay, now I'm sorry, he's a false prophet. I'll say it plainly. He prophesied less than a month ago, (laughs) less than a month ago, that Egypt, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Jordan would all come together and have a big, just a organic peace treaty. And that they all were going to get along now and everything was going to go great and, and it will all come up roses. Okay, if you, at the end of the service, if you're interested, I'll show you a video of him saying this. Okay? What happened a month later? What happened a month later? Right? (laughs) Hamas and the Palestinians attacked Israel like we haven't seen probably since World War II, I would imagine. Um, I don't know for sure, but pretty close. So Jesus, the first thing He does as He's answering the question is, is He says, for many... He says, for many will, uh, he says, see to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. How many times have we seen that? Right? Right here in our own city, well, a little outside of our city, man by the name of David Kresh, right? Claiming to be Jesus, claiming to be the Son of God. Right? And we've seen many others, right? Many others. Down through the ages. Even in the Bible, one of the Pharisees stood up and said, Remember, I don't remember the guy's name, but remember so and so, he claimed to be God, right? So, folk, we have to be careful. We have to be careful who we follow. <laughs> Amen? That we're not following preachers, right? That we're not following human beings, flesh and blood people, because they will lead us astray every single time. Every time. He says this, many will come and saying, come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will mislead many. Now listen to this real quick. Verse 6, you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Amen? Folk, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I was born in 1966. I cannot count 
the number of different wars that I could sit here and list out on a piece of paper since 1966 to present, right? Yeah, some, you know, I mean, we all know World War II, Vietnam, Korea, all of those, but all of the little bitty skirmishes that, that, that at least we as a country have somehow been involved in since that time, 50, just 57 short years, right? But he says something. For many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ and will mislead many. I, I meant to go to verse 6. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened. For these things must take place. Right? Must take place. They're not falling apart. They're falling into place. Amen? It's not falling apart. It's not coming apart at the seams. Like we, I <laughs> like to say, right? He's saying, listen folks, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked by it. It's going to happen. But guess what? You're okay. And you're going to be okay no matter what. No matter what. See that you are not frightened for those things must take place, but that, it, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. Right? Folk, I'm going to tell you, the way I see it, and I'm not a prophet, but folks, we just walked into the delivery room and we're getting ready to, it's fixing to happen. It really is. Now let me say this, let me put this in perspective a little bit. Ever since 1957, and I may have my date wrong, I may have the date wrong, but I think it was 57, Six Day War. Israel was attacked on all sides, okay? By, in, a, in case you don't know, every country around Israel is Israel's enemy, right? Every country around Israel is their enemy, right? They have been attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked, right? Folks, listen, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse for them. It's only going to get worse for us. Just the other day, a young lady stepped out of a synagogue. She was the, like the superintendent or president of this Jewish synagogue. And she was knifed to death in the street. Okay? Folk, we have our own senators and congressmen in this United States of America actively, actively speaking against the nation of Israel right now on the steps of the United States Capitol. Okay? Right now. <laughs> it's happening. Folks, let me tell you something. God sees everything that happens. God hears every word that is spoken. God is still in control. God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. I'm going to tell you something. I'd much rather have a human being take vengeance on me any day than I would God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Folks, there's a lot going on. And folk, we, we, need, we, we tend as human beings to get like a deer in the headlights, right? We freeze. <laughs> we see all this tragedy around us and we freeze, but folk, listen, God is still in control. He has not given up on us, nor will He. Amen? He hasn't. Turn over to the book of Isaiah. 
I want you to see real quick, and I, I know we're being brief here, but I, I want you to really see this, and, and I'm not going into a whole lot of detail, but I just want to set your minds at ease and your hearts at ease today. I want you to see who Israel was. Look at Isaiah 43. Over in the Old Testament, Isaiah 43, it really, in this short chapter, it really lays out who Israel is, who the nation of Israel is in God's eyes. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 says this, For now, thus saith the Lord, your Creator, O Jacob, and He's speaking of the nation of Israel, and He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. How in the world, how in, uh, it, 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 I mean, I know it's God, okay? But from a physical human perspective, how can a little teeny tiny nation like Israel, completely surrounded by honestly some of the richest nations in the world who are all their sworn enemy, how can they survive? How have they survived? How did, how did the Jews survive? How did any of the Jews survive the Holocaust? Six million Jews destroyed by someone named Adolf Hitler, right? But guess what? In 1948, they became a nation, right? It was no longer the land of Palestine. Right? It is now Israel. Their rightful place. The place that that God gave Abraham in the very beginning way back there. Right? He says, I have called you by name. You are mine. And listen to the promise that God gives Israel. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. Huh. I remember something about some water in Egypt. And the Israels walked through it. Amen? Israelis walked through it. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place, since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and will gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone is, who is called by my name and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. He's talking literally about the nation of Israel. In the last 40 years, approximately the last 40 years, more and more and more Jews from all over the world, okay, that were scattered out all over the world are coming back to Israel. Coming back, coming back, coming back. That's what he's talking about here. That's exactly what he's talking about here. Listen, folks. What I want you to understand is, is, well, let me read you something else. John MacArthur wrote this in the notes. Uh, I want you to hear this. The only expl- explanation for the ongoing existence of the nation of Israel is God's sovereign grace, which brought her into existence from nothing and sustains her. Since she was God's creation, she could find comfort in knowing that no one or nothing can destroy her, not even her own wickedness. Listen, there have been times, Israel is a very secular nation right now. They really are, okay? 
And some people have even speculated, I don't know, because I don't, I don't want to try to read God's mind, but some people have even speculated that this is God's punishment on Israel to try to help them turn back to Him. I don't know. Now, I know the history bears it out, okay? I mean, how many times do we read from Genesis all the way to, you know, to Revelation, basically, where Israel turned their backs on God, God sent them into captivity, or had an enemy come and attack them, and that turned them back. This could be that, I do not know, and I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to read God's mind, okay? Because what God's up to is none of my business, amen? Unless He makes it my business, right? I don't care what preacher stands up and says some of these things that they have this... I, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I'll start saying too much. Listen, folk, what you're seeing right now play out on the world stage has to happen. Okay? Israel's going to win this one. They really are. I, 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 not very often do I have anything good to say about our present American administration, but I will say this. President Biden was very quick to stand up and say that that rocket that was fired from Gaza came from Hamas and hit the parking lot of that hospital. He was very quick to say it, that all evidence points to it. They've proven it. They were able to track that missile with a satellite. They know where it came from. It was not Israel that fired it. Okay? Was not. It's been proven. And our president, Lord help him, our president stood up there and told the truth. And I, I would thank you, Lord, for that. But hear me. I want us to be ready. God wants us to be ready. Okay? Folks, listen. It's going to get worse. Can I say that? I, I, I know you don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we always seem to want unicorns and cotton candy, but I'm sorry, that's not what's coming. It's going to get worse. Israel's going to get hit again, right? We will probably be hit. We are right now, we've got aircraft carrier battle groups sitting off the coast of Israel right now. They have an estimated 20,000 Marines that are on standby, ready to go in. Okay? Yeah, they're going to release the bulldogs on them, amen? But hear me, okay? You're going to hear every news outlet. You're going to hear every pundit. You're going to hear every other nation leader. They are going to get against Israel like you have never seen. Okay? I'm sorry to say, probably aren't. Well, we already are seeing our own people in this nation going against Israel. Let's say, wait a minute, Brother Charlie, you're in church. You're supposed to be preaching the good news. I am preaching the good news. The good news is this, folks. Listen, it's all <laughs> falling into place. It is. This is the way God designed it. I'm not going to argue with God. Right? I'm not. I don't want to see anyone hurt. I pray for the innocence on both sides. Right? I don't want to see children hurt. I don't want to see children killed. I don't want to see innocent people hurt. I don't. But folks, listen. <laughs> this is all part of God's plan. It's all part of God's plan. And we've got to trust Him. We have got to trust Him. For a long time growing up, I always heard this term, but it's never needed more than it is needed right now. Pray for the peace of Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem right now. Okay? Folks, we are probably facing as a nation right now terror attacks. Up to and including as bad as 9-11. Okay, because the United States, I'll say this for one thing, the United States has always stood with Israel. And I pray that we will continue to because the Word of Almighty God says 
Those that bless Israel, I will bless. Those that curse Israel, I will curse. Folk, I pray, even if our United States doesn't stand with Israel, if they abandon them, that we as Christians don't get up off our knees, that we continue to pray for them. Amen? Amen. It is so, so, so important. I want to make sure just real rapidly here that I have not forgotten anything. Um, Here's what you can bet on, okay? In verse 9, and I'll close with this. Then they will deliver you. Now, now he's specifically talking about Christians here. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. Boy, that's something great to look forward to, huh? And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many because lawlessness is increased. Boy, we've seen that in our nation, haven't we? Most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. What he's speaking of there is this, okay? Those that truly know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we have a great and precious promise right here. We will be saved. Amen? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Right? So guess what, folk? It says, this gospel will be preached to all nations. Can I tell you something that will blow your mind? Who's going to preach it? We are. <laughs> we are. We are. We preach it every day. Right? <laughs> Whether we like it or not. We preach it far more with our actions than we do with our words, right? Remember, folk, we've got to hang in there. We've got to hang in there. We are as loved as a, by God as the nation of Israel, just like we've, we've read. We are God's children. Will bad things happen to us? Yes. Right? Will our enemies come against us? Yes. It, it says it right there. <laughs> but like the old preacher said, we win <laughs> in the end. I've read the back of the book. I've read the last page and we win. Amen? We've just got to endure. Don't be afraid of what you see. Don't be afraid of what you hear. Keep your nose in this book. And we'll have those great and precious promises. He loves us. He'll take care of us. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises that you have made us, Lord, that you will, just as, as the nation of Israel is, so is us as Christians, Lord. We know that you will hold us secure. God, that you will not let us go. That you'll love us and you'll protect us. And no matter what happens, Lord, you're there and we know, we know you win and therefore we win. God, I pray that uh, if there are, is anyone here today, Lord, that needs you, Lord, especially if they need salvation, if they, if they need to know you as Lord and Savior, God, I pray that today would be that day. Lord, if there's one that is strayed that needs to be closer to you, Lord, one that is a Christian but has just wandered away like the prodigal, Lord, I, I pray, God, today would be that day that you'd bring them back. Lord, help us to see everything that we see through spiritual eyes, your eyes, Lord. Give us discernment. And God, most of all, give us peace. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all you're going to do. In Christ's name. Amen.